you said we ran out of talent during the playoffs. Obviously, some injuries had to do with that. But after you yeah. made this, these transactions, where would you say your talent level is without obviously playing a game yet? Well, it's you got to factor in that we lost a Hall of Fame player in the backcourt with Russell, but you gain a lot more flexibility at the wings uh, in the backcourt with adding Pope and, and Aaron. Everybody can kind of bump both positions, bring Neto back in the backcourt. At least you solidified that area. And then the wings we're really excited about because I think Pope can play two and three. I think Kyle can play the three and the four. And really excited about what, you know, what Trez can do. He just goes out. He's an energy person that brings so much to the, to the table. I think he can play multiple positions. And then we added with Corey, I think is going to be an excellent knockdown shooter for us, uh, somebody that we want to add. And then, you know, I was referring to, when we ran out of town, like just losing Davies really hurt. We're getting Thomas Bryant back. Davies has been playing in some pre-European uh, qualifiers, played against Belarus and Romania. He's playing very well. He's back to you know, what we expect him to be, and I'm excited for his future. Getting in in September early and staying healthy, having a great camp will mean the world to us. And then, you know, we obviously added uh, Isaiah Todd for the future, but he's – He's very convinced that he can help us. And I'm I just I'm never gonna say no. Or let him go prove it for himself. But I think Chris to, to really uh, reflect back on last season and what we needed moving forward. We needed more players that are ready to play now. And we didn't sacrifice the future. We didn't do anything other than try to replenish that those positions, the defensive wings I think we addressed. And I'm really excited about that. Yeah, just to follow up on just kind of the defensive side of it, just from the veterans that you brought in. They all really spoke to me about, you know, having some type of chip on their show. There's something to prove, right? To yeah. even get veterans at that point, um, is that a positive for the program when you've got guys like Montrez who wants to prove? Kuzma even talked about improving his defense. KCP is a 3 and D type guy. Yeah. Um, did you improve your team, like, on the defensive end, you think? I believe we did. You know, I think it starts with Spencer. He has two chips on both shoulders. Um, you know, coming off an injury, he want, has a lot to prove. I think what he needs to do is, is he and Bradley both kind of take that first big step forward that first day of training camp and lead us through getting better defensively. We both know uh, we know both of them are excellent defenders and all the other people that we added certainly are going to fall in line with that. But, you know, with, in, in Pope's case and with Kyle, you know, they both have rings. They've, they've been through a great deal and they've seen what it takes to get to a championship level as role players and, and they're stars in their roles. And we expect that to translate here tremendously. You know, Trez was a six man of the year. He's a very gifted player, hell of an athlete and, and somebody that really loves to play basketball. So I think all those guys will fit in perfectly. We think Aaron is a player that has uh, tremendous potential, kind of untapped that he was stuck in a log jam in Indiana. He's somebody we really valued since we, he worked out for us uh, prior to his first season as a rookie and one of the most competitive guys that, that we've been around in, in our drills that we do for pre-draft stuff. And I know what Aaron brings to that backcourt, him and Neto behind Spencer and, and Bradley, certainly they'll be able to play together. They can play either position. So we were really looking for that versatility, Chris, the ability to bump up or bump down each position is huge for us. Thanks, Tommy. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Brad. Hey, Tommy. How are you? I'm doing great. It's uh, a little um, warm here. Quite warm. Uh, I, would you say, I mean, it's, it's kind of getting to the quieter part of free agency right now. Would you say that you're done with, with building the roster, at least between now and, and training camp? Or uh, are you still looking to make adjustments to it? I think you always want to give every opportunity to make your roster better. And, you know, we, we have Cassius Winston who's not able to play here. Um, and that, that really, it stinks for him. Fortunately, he was able to play in the G League bubble, but his off-season development now, he's missed two summer leagues, but he's, he's holding down a two-way opportunity. We have another two-way position that's open, so we got to look at that and see what is out there because I really believe those positions are invaluable during the season. We're looking at exhibit 10s for the go-go, so there's still a lot of work to be done, and then, you know, always – you keep making calls. You always want to know what, what other teams think of your players. You want to make sure that everybody's aware of what our strategies are for, for moving forward next season and see what theirs are. And if there's something that makes sense, we usually 
we like to, to do things to make our team better no matter what time of year it is. But uh, I would tell you that as of today, I feel really satisfied that we did a lot to make the Wizards deeper and better moving forward. And what was, uh, what was it that you found from an encore perspective uh, that, that you liked about bringing in Spencer Dimwitty as a, as a fit next to Bradley Beal and just as a guy to run your offense? Uh, I think his, you know, the last time Spencer was out on the NBA floor and was able to play at a high clip, a healthy level, you know, he was over 20 and six, almost seven assists a night. So he's, he's a capable scorer. So that takes some pressure off of Bradley. He's a very gifted passer. And I think he, he is a very physical defender. Um, and I think they'll play very well together. You know, really, we get a little bit too focused on who starts games. I always look and see who's, who ends games and how we can end games. You can put so many shooters out on the court, you can put creators out on the floor. I, I see Bradley having the ball in his hands a great deal of the time at the end of games, obviously, and people that can play off of him and, and drive and kick and open up passing lanes for each other. I think that's going to be critical. And now we have a little bit more versatility, a lot more more talent to do those things. Chase? Hey, Tommy. Um, last year when you guys signed Howell Neto, uh, you pointed out uh, his adjusted plus minus, and it looks like um, Aaron Holiday kind of shows up similarly. Um, do you think that Holiday, do you see any similarities between the two, and, and was that a, a reason why you, you targeted him? We, we targeted Aaron a couple of times, uh, previous trade deadlines, tried to acquire him and it just, you know, sometimes things just don't work out, but usually trade deadline calls, the trades that don't work out kind of somehow resurface in the summer and, and maybe it takes a year, it takes two years, but we've always loved Aaron and, and he's known that uh, going back to when he worked his draft workout for us. And, um, I, I think he always saw this would be a great place for him and vice versa. And, Yes, his defensive metrics were awesome, but his grit that he displayed in our workouts, you know, I know I keep kind of coming back to one moment in time, but it's something we saw throughout his college career, something he displayed when he was in our building, something we've seen when he's had opportunities to play. It's just finding that right niche, you know, and how will the same deal. I, I watched how will play with the Brazilian national team. He might travel with their national team to the Worlds when they were in uh, Spain. And I saw it in how will and when he was a young man playing in, in international games and those things just kind of replay themselves. If given an opportunity, I think he can do the same things with us. So yes, his defensive numbers uh, definitely had twitched to us, but so do the other things that we've noticed in, over the years with him and really excited. I think he's, he's grateful for a fresh start. And um, Dinwiddie, you mentioned his injury, Thomas Bryan as well. What, what's the latest on those guys? Do you expect to have them, um, operate normally through training camp? Well, certainly with Spencer, but we're going to take our time with both guys and make sure it's not about a, a date on the calendar. It's when they're hundred percent healthy. I think Spencer is further ahead uh, than Thomas, but I think with Thomas, we're going to make sure hundred percent that he's healthy. Training camp is difficult to miss, but it's in critical if you're not available to go through it, then certainly we got to maximize the time his rehab time and everything. I don't have a, calendar in front of me. I know they're both progressing as they should. Uh, Spencer was out here working out, looked great. He's going to progress to two on two, three on three, you know, and we'll, we'll measure it as we go through September. Thomas is running. He's out on the court um, doing what he's supposed to do. So our measurables right now, they're on track to be available. Um, I, I can't see Thomas necessarily being in our first game and we'll measure it as we go along but I'm really pleased with their progress. And I can't say enough about our medical staff and their help at, uh, tracking these guys and making sure, especially with Spencer, Spencer getting integrated right away. Uh, we had a great conversation, a great kickoff to our, the way we're gonna attack his rehab as we get to the season. And our medical staff is really, they're fantastic. And it's gonna be pretty seamless integration, I believe, to, to get him going. Kareem. Hey, Tommy, um, appreciate you taking the time. I want to ask quickly about Kyle. You know, he's had so many kind of roles so far already in his short career um, where, you know, at one point he seemed like the uh, immovable guy out there in L.A. and 
you know, I think he was scoring 18 points a game his second year and then kind of fell into more of a role when they kind of won that title. What do you kind of envision of him? Does he kind of see more of a guy who will be in more for that role? Or do you see him ultimately kind of getting back to being um, a little bit more of that big time score that he kind of showed earlier in his career? I, we certainly think he's capable of that. Uh, that was an astute observation. His, his role did change when they got LeBron, you know, and I, as it probably should. And then with AD behind him. So he, he recognizes that he had to take a step back. But I think he's extremely confident in his ability to impact us. And he's really excited just to get a, get a chance to play next to Bradley Beal with Spencer, with his teammates that he's familiar with. And, you know, everybody keeps pointing out the, the new guys keep they really point out about Rui. And I think they, they are aware that Davies can shoot from anywhere. And, you know, I think everyone's kind of curious about Denny. The Denny factor is, is something that I think is going to be exciting to those players they get around him. And, and now that he's healthy and what he's up to, I think they're going to see we got a lot of versatile guys. We have some length out there. Uh, we're really going to have to pay attention on the defensive end. But I think we've increased our IQ at that end for sure. And uh, very the attention to detail that, that Wes and his staff bring to that defensive end is going to be immediate impact, I believe. Uh, but stuff doesn't happen overnight. I think what we got to build on, particularly as these guys get together, is just that familiarity. So September is so important to us. We'll have some open runs and get guys to figure out what, what a good lineup looks like. And, you know, shooters, they, they like the, the ball in certain places. I think that's something Spencer's really dialed in on. He wants to know where guys like the ball and uh, setting guys up. But I think he and Bradley, they, they look at the game pretty similarly. And I think they both want to be efficient scorers. They both want to make sure that they play off each other very well. And uh, I think everybody acknowledges that if, if we get our defensive commitment in, we, we got a really good deep team. And, and just a quick follow up on that, you know, you, you've mentioned the wings a couple times, you know, depth and versatility on the wing is definitely a good problem to have. But do you also kind of look at it where, you know, you some with Rui and, and Denny, those guys are young and, and still kind of need, you know, as much floor action as possible. Do you think of that balance or how that balance can shake out with, you know, some of the veterans that you brought in, but still giving those young guys room to grow? Well, certainly. I mean, I, I, I don't see Rui's role changing. He's he started since his rookie year. I think Denny uh, gives him a little bit more confidence I believe if he comes off the bench that second unit he can be a secondary playmaker and do a lot more things that maybe he wasn't able to do with that starting lineup last year and no roles are nailed down certainly if he earns more minutes he'll earn more minutes but I think we we really want to start off the season you know it just seemed for about the last five years we always start out the season in kind of in a, in a hole if it was injury or we just couldn't finish out games or whatever you want to get off to a great start and you want to get the confidence rolling, and that's for every player on this roster, not just Denny, not just Rui. And I think those guys will be able to certainly be um, big contributors to our roster next year. You know, Rui has for two years, and Denny was on his way. That injury really kind of stunk. But uh, I'm excited for all those guys, and I think it's really important to see the versatility. That that's going to be a key strength of this team, where last year I don't think we had that. I think the depth, we didn't have that last year. Now we have that. We, we're going to miss Russell. There's no question. He made a huge impact on this franchise, but I, I'm really excited where we are moving forward. And I can't say that enough. And I haven't had a chance to really address, you know, what we did on draft night, what we did on in free agency and stuff, but I, I cannot possibly thank our front office staff, uh, what we went through in free agency draft night and stuff there, just the effort and the stick to and, the ability to really put some difficult things together, uh, you know, from Brett Greenberg and Ben Eidelberg and Sam Kaplan, but Antoine Jameson, Johnny Rogers, Frank Ross, our family, we, we were sequestered in LA getting through free agency and just what everybody, we all came together to make sure that thing got through. And I can't thank them enough. We have a, I'm blessed with a tremendous support staff. Appreciate it. Thank you. You're welcome. Matt. Hey, Donnie, uh, you mentioned the flexibility that the Westbrook trade provides. Obviously, that is on the floor, too, with kind of the defense. But just kind of long term, you know, you've gone from John to Russell to now kind of these contracts. How, how does this move kind of help you build longer term to, to make if you want to be flexible or push chips in? Like, how do you think that does it free you up at all or 
anything like that? Uh, certainly, you always keep an eye on the future, and you, you know where your cap is moving forward. And having a lot of better contracts gives you a lot more flexibility. But I'd like to see these players play for us. I'd like to see these guys come together, and matriculate as a roster. I think chemistry is something that's so important. And we showed last year that group was able to come together the last, that's the second half of the season. And, and what they were able to do at the end gives you hope that, hey, you can, you can get groups, new players together, and, and they can still come together and do good things. You know, bringing Daniel Gafford in at deadline, you know, his impact was tremendous in the 23 games he was able to play. So I'm not afraid to bring new players in and think that, okay, well, now we're going to have to take four years for these guys to get together. Not at all. I think we just we're looking for seamless integration. We know there'll be some turbulence. We know there'll be bumps sometimes, but overall, I, I just like the direction of having those. You know, instead of having so much invested in one or two contracts, being able to spread the wealth a little bit uh, gives us a lot more optionality and it gives us a lot more versatility. And I, I really like the the years of service. You know, I think our roster actually got younger, but we have a lot more players with a lot more games, a lot more playoff games. Um, you know, I think having guys who've won championships is very meaningful as well. And I'm excited about that. And I'm curious, just what did you make of kind of the movement in the East? You know, you had a lot of other teams try and upgrade their rosters. Obviously, that's always the case. But how do you kind of see, like, yourself? Like, did you guys raise a tier within the East? Like, how do you kind of evaluate the landscape of everything that's happened kind of around the league? Uh, we'll, we'll let the future decide that. I, I don't, you know, I, I, you look around, you notice what everybody else has done. Certainly, we, we watch the league very carefully, but I'm more concerned about the Wizards and what we're doing, you know, and I think it's been in less than 60 days. Uh, we, we went, we pivoted from a coaching staff. We went through 18 interviews, actually about 26 interviews. Uh, we named a new coach. We went through the draft combine. We went through the draft. We went through free agency. You know, that's a lot of stuff. And we added whatever it is, eight new players. That's a lot in 60 days. So we're more focused on what the Wizards are doing and how we're going to come the rest of the summer coming into free, uh, not free agency anymore, but coming into the season. That's our focus. Everybody in the summer, I don't think anybody says, man, we really did some stupid stuff. Like everybody feels good in the summer. You find out in the winter what you did in the summer. Neil. Hey, Tommy. Good morning. Good morning. I'm uh, sorry if on, there's some noise in the background. You guys can hear me okay? Yep, we can hear you. Uh, on the broadcast yesterday, you talked about, you know, wanting the roster to be more balanced. I'm curious what that means to you, if you can elaborate on that. Do you feel like there's still another move to be made to try and free up, you know, you guys have a lot of bigs on the roster, or how do you see that playing out? Like I said earlier on this call, I just think we, we look for opportunities to get better. We focus on who's here right now, and uh, that's where we're at our baseline. But until you, the, you know, until you get to the season, I think you, you owe it to the Wizards franchise to do the very best you can. If there's other opportunities, we look at it. But I can really be excited about this roster now. We have a good balance of vets and youth and opportunities for guys to get out and play. I, I'm really excited about the potential of Corey Kispert, what he's been, what he's brought in summer league is difficult. Um, you know, I'm, I'm not making light of it, but if anybody knows the movie Spinal Tap, like our point guard position in summer league has been like the drummer from Spinal Tap. They just keep disappearing. We, we've gone through four of them. They never got a chance to play. So we're having like open tryouts and it's hard for a shooter. You don't have a really proven point guard. And, and we did, we just couldn't get him out on the floor. So but what I've seen from Corey is he, he takes great shots. He knows how to get open, but he'll dive on the ball on the floor. He, he's able to create for himself, but he's, you know, he's a pretty tough defender. He knows how to play basketball. And then with Isaiah, you know, he, he got sprung yesterday about 1030, hadn't touched the ball in a week plus. But you got to think about it, his last organized basketball game was in the G League bubble. So yesterday, you know, I don't know if you could hear it on TV. You could sure hear him breathing heavy and he had heavy legs, but he was able to get through it. And I think his potential for down the road is going to be excellent. But, um, you know, I'm excited where we're at. But if we can get better, we continue to do that. And if you have an update on Denny, I know you guys, you know, held him out of summer league, but he's fully cleared. Has he done any contact one-on-one, -on -one, two on two, or where is he currently? Yeah, we held him. He was going to come out to, um, 
this is probably more than you need to know. He was going to be out here. We had some vets come through. Uh, Spencer was through here. Kyle was through here. Gaff's out here still. Uh, Bradley, we had some guys that were in and out, but we, we kind of, after everything started popping back up out here with COVID and contact tracing and stuff, we kind of cautioned guys not to come around. So Denny was in that. He, he, he was on his way here and he stayed in D.C. So he's working out. Uh, he has taken contact on now and, you know, he's cleared to play. So we're anxious to get back and put some, uh, you know, two on two stuff together for him and get ready for like after Labor Day, we, we will be full gym. We'll have everybody in town and get ready to roll. And that's when that's Denny time. He's better be ready to, to strap it on because these guys are going to come at him. And I think he's excited for that opportunity. Thanks, Tommy. Appreciate it. Um. Hey, Tommy. Um. You were just talking, you just touched on the 60 days that you guys have had. It's been really busy of really kind of going to work for this franchise. I'm wondering from your perspective and maybe even Bradley Beal's perspective, what is it like to kind of think at one point you're moving forward with Russell Westbrook and planning for that and then all of a sudden having to reconfigure your team and doing it in the way you guys have done it and moving in this direction? You know, I can't speak for Bradley. We, we speak openly about you know the direction of the wizards and it's important to me to get his insight but you know we always got to do what's best for the wizards and that that was a very very unusual circumstance where you know the day before the draft just kind of some spitballing some ideas and, and getting some input and, you know had a heart to heart with russell and you know something it was important to him that that i knew and that the wizards knew he wants to play here if there's ever an opportunity with the lakers that would be the one place and, you know, I look at his Hall of Fame career and all he did for us. And he certainly, it'd be, for me, I'll try to help a guy as long as it helps the Wizards. And in this case, we could do a deal and it did help the Wizards. If that deal didn't go through, Russ would still be playing for us and we'd all be happy. If that opportunity presented itself, it was a great deal for both sides. And I think it made a lot of sense for both of us. And I wish him the very best. You know, he's so amazing. Uh, but for us, we were really excited about what we received in that deal. And, it, it was, you know, a couple of days there, it was like passing a kidney stone, but we finally got it done. And, and I think it, you know, very, very beneficial for both sides. Thanks, Tommy. Notorious Ohm. Okay. Um, Tommy, I guess on a related note, how do you hope that um, all these moves that you've made will position you for uh, contract talks with Bradley Beal uh, later this year? Uh, you know, I, I don't I hope doesn't enter the equation. It's all part of the cadence that we continue to do. You know, I, I really can't talk about Bradley any more than we've already talked about and all agree that I'm going to be there the first day we can do the extension. So if you want to replay the, the past 20 interviews and you've asked these questions, I'll probably give you the same answer, Chase. Uh, we were just trying to get the Wizards better. And that's our, been our commitment all the time. So hopefully that if they didn't remember from the last 20 times you asked, that's uh, that's still my answer, buddy. We look forward to that. Uh, Might have been the first time I've asked, but uh, another Beal question. You you have long been tied to international basketball and, and Team USA. Just what was your reaction to, obviously, the unfortunate timing of him having to leave before the Olympics? I'm sorry if my accounting was off on that, Chase. I'm not trying to blow you up. <laughs> anyway, I was devastated for Bradley. How much that opportunity meant to him the one great thing about this being 2021 he will be on the 2024 team and he deserves it more than anybody he, he he embodied the olympic spirit that team was devastated when he was uh not able to go forward with them you know I, i've talked to players i stayed in vegas uh and, and had an opportunity to sit with coach pop and all the coaches all the players that were around and it was you know it was almost like a funeral atmosphere because he meant so much to that team. But I think, you know, certainly the fact that they were able to get the goal, he heard from, from everybody from the locker room in Tokyo. And I mean, players were calling him, coaches were texting to him, saying how much they wish he was there to celebrate that and how much he meant to the team. So, you know, you grieve and you move on. You know, it was just basketball. And he'll get an opportunity to be on that 2024 team. But that, that was a... That was a fun Olympics to watch. Take the last question from Chris Miller. Tommy, earlier you gave a lot of credit to your front office staff on pulling off a deal like this, but 
I can't wait for the book to be released. You have to tell me how in the world did you get four other teams to cooperate and collaborate on a deal like this? You just everybody has to get something out of it that makes it be them better. And in this case, everybody did. It was a great situation, very rare. I think it's the second five-way trade in the league history. But if you continue to do good for each other and somebody is getting something out of it, I think you'll see this more often. It was creative, you know, and we certainly went the extra mile on it, but that's because it was worth doing. You know, we didn't do it to get notoriety out of it or anything. We did it because it's the best thing for the Wizards. And it's the best thing for the Pacers, for the Spurs, et cetera. I don't okay, I guess I'll wait for the book to come out. <laughs> yeah, I guess I'll wait for the book to come out. I, I, I can't wait. It might, be, <laughs> yeah, it might be a pretty funny book to read in some regards just because – Time, you know, the time is now we, we're away from it. It doesn't seem like it was that long, but, you know, free agency, it seems like free agency was over after, you know, when it started at three o'clock, it was over by about 3.30 or four, it felt like, you know, and so I was getting getting some heat from people asking like, ah, oh, what's taking so long? And I was like, man, if you only knew what we were working on, it takes a little, a little bit longer, but it was worth it. I'm happy and, you know, no lives were harmed in this deal, so we, we're happy about that. We just keep moving. So the phone bill, will you ever text me and just let me know what the, how much the phone bill costs to get all hey, these? I promise you what, man. It, <laughs> I wish we did have some transcripts. We had some really <laughs> funny conversations in there. A lot of, a lot of, come on now, let's let's do this the right way kind of conversation. But everybody, like I said, everybody got something out of it that was good for them. So those are the best deals.